Third graders, welcome to your second read aloud Tuesday. The story is called Bird Song, and um, I chose this story because it's very sweet. It's also a little bit sad, and it deals with the feeling that I was talking about in the art project on Monday, the feeling called grief, which is the feeling where you're feeling sad about something or someone who you've lost, but you also feel this really huge amount of gratitude for having known that person or known that thing or been able to do that thing. And since grief is a feeling that I'm feeling about the time that we were able to spend together or really the time that we lost that we could have spent together, I thought that this would be a good book to read um, as a way to deal with that feeling a little bit. So um, please enjoy or please be thoughtful or please just relax and listen to the story Birdsong. I also wanted to say that this story is written by Julie Flett, who is uh, from the Cree Nation. The Cree are a group of people who are one of the largest First Nations in North America. Um, most Cree people live in Canada, but there are also some people, Cree people who live in Montana today. Um, and I'm telling you that because um, that is mentioned in the story, so that will help you make sense of the story. Okay, Bird Song by Julie Flett. Spring. It's a mucky spring morning as we pack up the last of our belongings and leave our little home in the city by the sea. I'm going to miss my friends and cousins and aunties and uncles. I'm going to miss my bedroom window and the tree outside. Goodbye tree friend, I whisper. We drive through the country and over the mountains, alongside rivers and fields of horses. We stop to see a lone coyote crossing the road. Our new home sits on a hill overlooking a field and past it, another home. In that home lives an older woman named Agnes. The field is covered in snowdrops. Our new home has two trees outside and creaky stairs inside. My new room has a shelf for books and pictures and a desk for drawing, but I don't feel like drawing. My hands are cold. My mom and I bundle up under the covers in our new home. And I can't read these words here, but something in the sea, in a room over the sea maybe. Summer. Our new home hums with peeps and whistles and ribbits and chirps. I watch Agnes, our neighbor, working on something in her yard. Why don't you visit her, Katerina? My mom says. I nod. Okay. I take our dog, Oho, with me. Oho means owl in Cree. Hello, Agnes, I say. You must be Katerina, she says. Woof, Oho barks. Your mom has told me all about you, Agnes says. She says you love to draw. I do. Agnes loves to make things out of clay. She shows us around her yard. There are berries and flowers and so many of her clay things. They look like the branches and birds and flowers. Visit me again soon, Katerina, Agnes says with a smile. I smile back and give her a big wave. I can't wait to go home and start drawing. Fall. I do visit Agnes again. 
and again and again. Agnes digs in her garden. I help by gathering extra leaves that'll get mixed into the soil. The worms love this. It's getting cold and windy and creaky. Agnes says she's getting creaky too. Would you like to see what I'm working on, Katerina? She asks. I'd like that, I say. Agnes is working on a pot that's round and bright. She tells me about waxing and waning moons. I tell her about Cree seasons. This month is called, I'm, I don't think I can pronounce that word, Pumahawipishim, the migrating moon. Here comes the moon and two shiny seagulls, and there go the geese. Winter. It's Oho's first snow. We toboggan until my snowsuit is soggy and Oho is covered in tiny snowballs. After, we warm up with mom by the fire and then help her finish making salmon stew to share with Agnes. Agnes hasn't been out as much and needs a little help over the winter. She likes the salmon stew. Her daughter, who has come to stay for a while, likes it too. Agnes sends me home with a cup full of bulbs, snowdrop bulbs to plant in the field next autumn. They look like tiny moons. They give me more ideas for pictures. My fingers itch in my mittens. Spring. Agnes has grown weaker over the winter. Still from her bed, we can hear the spring birds singing their songs and the tickle of branches against her window. We listen to the sounds together. The snowdrops are peeking out. I wish Agnes could see them. I have an idea. I run home and gather up all my drawings. Agnes's daughter meets me at the door and we take two ladders from the closet. She put up all pictures of all the birds. It's so sweet. When we're done, Agnes says it's like a poem for her heart. Then I sit with Agnes and talk about making things, mucky things and things with string and song and paper and words. And then we sit quietly together on Agnes's bed until it's time to say goodbye. I leave with an ache in my heart, but I'm so glad to know my friend Agnes. Hello, mom. Hello, Oho. Hello, home with two trees and creaky stairs. Later that night, Again, another word I don't think I can pronounce, but it's right here. The frog moon is full. My mom and I bundle up in our home. My hands feel warm and the covers feel soft. And I think of my friend until I fall asleep. And that's the end. So you can let me know what you think about this book in the comments below. You can talk about a part you like or something that you like about it or something it made you feel or something it made you think. You don't have to leave anything at all if you don't want to. Um, and I hope you liked listening to it. Thanks.